Salam, peace, and welcome to Muslim Network TV. You're watching us on Galaxy 19 Satellite, on Amazon Fire TV, Raku, as well as a whole lot of social media, including our own website, muslimnetwork.tv. Thank you so much. Uh, we are here to connect, connect to each other, connect to our neighbor. Uh, today we will be talking about a topic uh, which we don't know a whole lot. I mean, we think we know, but probably not a whole lot. I needed a lawyer. So I looked up, asked a recommendation, soft appointment, and showed up. And uh, Lloyd was a stern as uh, not much welcoming, but not threatening either. And he listened to me and said, oh, you're a very educated person. You don't need a lawyer. Here's a farm. Go just fill it out and submit it. I think things will happen the way you want it. If there is a problem, then you need to contact me. And he gave me good advice, gave me a farm, which I have no idea where it is, uh, and didn't charge me anything. I was surprised. I have many experiences with lawyers, but one, another experience I'd like to share with you, uh, this lawyer actually quit his practice. And uh, he was a big law firm in Chicagoland area. He thought they are practicing something unethical. Uh, they're billing the same time to multiple clients. So they're making money, putting, okay, I spent two hours on this, two hours on that, and things like that. While that is the time uh, they're billing to multiple uh, clients instead of one client. And he started actually a company. And that company was to ensure that when lawyers bill, there is a level of transparency. So they don't pre uh, uh, bill multiple lawyers. So have you dealt with lawyers? What is your experience with that? America somehow either does not have a bad experience or they're jealous of lawyers that they're making money. And Gallup poll always polls people different professions. And the best profession which came out was the nurses. Only 2% people have low opinion. Otherwise people have 84% people have very high opinion and doctors and pharmacists and teachers and then police officers. But among the lowest opinion is of members of Congress. Uh, only 8% uh, appreciate them, majority of them does not. And just little above are lawyers. Why lawyers have such a low opinion in the eyes of America? And this is not one year survey. This is a consistent 17 year survey in which nurses are always number one. Uh, religious people are in the middle somewhere. They used to be at higher level, but it's going down. So watch out for that. So does a lawyer know uh, what is in your best interest? Uh, can we do a better do job dealing with lawyers? Do we really need lawyers to discuss all of this with us? Is no other than another lawyer. Her name is Zarina Nadir. Welcome, Zarina Nadir, to Muslim Network TV. Salaamu Alaikum. Wa oh, Alaikum Salaam, Imam Mujahid. Thank you for having me. Zarina Nadir is a licensed attorney uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, a criminal justice professor, and a community activist. Currently, her practices practice focuses on access to justice. She presents nationwide on navigating Islamic uh, uh, marital and inheritance law within the American legal system. Her book, Legacy Savvy, is due out in the end of this year. So people are in writing books. Where is my book? I should write one. How are you, Zarina? Alhamdulillah. I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. All right. Um, have you heard lawyers' jokes? So why there is such a low rating? I mean, uh, it's even lower than police. 
<laughs> you know, um, I have, but I think most people know not to not to say those jokes around me. Um, I really <laughs> <laughs> try to do my best to um, show the the beautiful side of of the practice of law, the noble side of it. It it really is a a noble profession. I do understand where uh, those commentaries do come from. Um, unfortunately, a lot of uh, you know, there's a large segment of our society that if really um, their main interactions with attorneys hasn't been good. Um, they either haven't had any experience or, you know, the experience that they have had was maybe a family member who was going through, you know, being arrested maybe or or being sued. And, and, and that has been kind of the, the prevailing perspective of attorneys um, or them not being able to afford attorney. And so then they're, you know, kind of jostled around. But I, I know a lot of it, I know where it comes from and I appreciate uh, you know, I appreciate the, where it comes from, but my goal is to to see if I can help kind of reframe that for, for folks. <laughs> well, reframing is the word. Uh, I'm a Muslim. You're a Muslim. Muslim have a PR problem. Do lawyers have a PR problem? That's a great way to put it. We do. Uh, we definitely do have a PR problem. And where does it stem from? Really, uh, you know, again, it stems from this this historical generational lack of access to to attorneys and to to justice. Um, and so, you know, there's a segment of our society that has long realized the benefit of having constant attorney access. Uh, they their budget allows for it, uh, you know, uh, and and so they they've been able to utilize attorneys not just for bad things. I think that's one of the biggest myths that we have about utilizing attorneys that it's just for bad things. And so really we've waited uh, to address our issues until they become uh, what I like to say at the pneumonia level rather than catching them at the cough level. Um, if we were able to do that more like the super wealthy of our society, then our perspective of, you know, the attorneys and how they're able to help us and really keep us out of trouble rather than getting us, you know, out of trouble, it, it really changes the game. Um, when you're in a circumstance where now it's, it's dire, the only, op, you know, option is going to court and maybe duking it out or, or being arrested. Well, you know, I argue that there are several steps that were likely missed before that. And if they were uh, able to be uh, handled with the intervention and the advice and the guidance of attorneys, they would have been a lot better off. You know, there's another word for attorney uh, and lawyer. It's counselor. Uh, we are actually a counselor also, and we prefer a lot of us to be in that role. Sure, there are some who are litigators, and that's where they uh, they thrive. They thrive when it's time to go into the courtroom. Um, but you, you know, you speak with almost any attorney and they'll tell you our goal is, is to keep you out of the courtroom, not to just get you out of the courtroom. By the time you're in the courtroom, you know, it's, it's, it's a, this is kind of like a last resort, um, but there's lots of other things that could have happened before that. So my goal really is to help people understand the benefits of having access to an attorney, earlier intervention uh, of an attorney, being more proactive and well, more permitted. How, how young were you when you decided they said, I am going to be a lawyer? So interestingly, it was uh, shortly after September 11th. I'm uh, I'm in that generation where I was in undergrad in uh, in in Arizona State University, and I was majoring in Spanish. And my decide my my question was at that point: Okay, what do I do from here? Uh, do I become a professor, or you know, think about law school? Those are always the questions, right, that we have after completing our our, our bachelors. And uh, my senior year was 9/11. Uh, and I saw the disparities that were happening within the Muslim community, um, not unlike the disparities that happened in, um, you know, another over, uh, a crossover community, the African American community, which I'm a part of, and, and seeing the, the challenges that happen within our community when we don't have access to information, and especially legal information. See, there, there's information, and then there's usually oftentimes a, a legal answer or a legal component to it that many of us just haven't had. And so I was seeing individuals of our community being questioned by the FBI, um, simply talking to the FBI. Uh, some people were having going down for conversations, and some of them were not coming back. Um, we, we didn't have this kind of representation. And so um, I decided, I said, okay, I need to learn another language. And that's the language of the law. And so that what, that's what inspired me um, or really catapulted me to go uh, to law school. And, uh, and I was really excited, um, and, I, and I love being a lawyer. I'm a lawyer by passion as well as profession. Um, wow. and, and 
Alhamdulillah. Well, in being in the profession is when I really started to see where the main issues were. Um, and a lot of the issues do come to accessing attorneys. It's not that we attorneys are There are today. many people in your generation, I mean, uh, in the Muslim community who decided to study law because of what happened post 9-11. I, uh, the, the, uh, the new law students definitely increased after that. We still don't have enough, I believe. Um, I believe we still need more uh, who decide to go into law. Um, it's, it definitely isn't an easy profession, but, um, you know, I do want to encourage that more of us go into the field, um, not necessarily to just take people to court, but to be able to have this kind of access to knowledge to get this knowledge back into our communities. And, you know, it's not that we would make everybody a lawyer by having a presentation or a conversation, but there are certain, uh, there are certain aspects about the law that we all within the society need to understand. Our U.S. society is a society that is based on laws. And every issue oftentimes has a legal issue to it as well. So we might be thinking, oh, okay, somebody's decided to get married, for example. Like, yay, alhamdulillah, it's just a big, you know, it's going to have a wedding, uh, you know, and they're just going to live together and everything's going to work out well. Well, there are so many laws that trigger when somebody decides that they even want to get married. Um, there's things that they could put in place um, to protect the union, um, protect the family, protect um, certain assets, the children. Um, there are conversations and, and uh, obligations that occur. Um, as soon as you decide to sign that dotted line, that's a contract. Um, and I always say, you know, when signing contracts, and this goes for everything, in addition to marriage, buying a car, uh, renting a house, buying a house, uh, never sign a contract you don't know how to get out of. Uh, it's, these are very important kinds of um, uh, li literacy, legal literacy, uh, and we need to just be a lot more savvy about dealing with these kinds of matters. So, you know, many of us just are very clueless about this. Many of us didn't have attorneys in the family. Many of us didn't have access um, to, to attorneys. Well, uh, that defines me definitely. My mom, by the way, always thought, uh, you know, it, it seems like you're gonna become a lawyer. He, she thought that I'm always coming up with an argument or something. Okay, so how do I decide if I need a lawyer or not? That's a great question. And I'll argue that that's a question you want to ask a lawyer. Ask a lawyer if you need a lawyer. Um, you know, and, and, and a lot of times what we end up doing is, and that's a really great question. A lot of times what we end up doing is putting that on Facebook, right? Hey, friend, uh, you know, this happened to me. What do you think? Um, and to have a non-lawyer tell you if you need to have a lawyer or not, then, um, you know, that's, that's even actually kind of unauthorized practice of law. It's really important to talk to an attorney. Um, and, and there's a couple of things that we need to understand about that. So attorneys are similar to doctors in that we have different areas of practice. So it's really important to talk to an attorney who is practicing in that particular area of the law that you need. So just like you wouldn't go to a cardiologist for a foot problem, you wouldn't go to a family law attorney for a criminal issue. Um, you know, and, and usually attorneys have a couple of different areas that they practice. Some focus just on one area, but usually not everything. Um, not only that, attorneys are licensed in particular states. Every state has a license uh, where we went, we studied, we took the, an exam, it's known as the bar exam. Uh, we, we passed it and then we had to also pass character and fitness. And so then we got a license. And so that um, is really state specific. So I've had circumstances where someone, because I'm, I'm fortunate to travel, I'm fortunate to connect with our community throughout the country, where people know that I'm an attorney and they know that my background has been in juvenile law and, and some family law, but they're in Chicago and they're calling me about their family law situ situation. I just had another colleague who reached out to me and they have a family law situation, child custody issue, but it's in Texas. I can't even begin to tell you about how the process is going to go there. So it's very key to, to understand which attorney to speak to um, uh, and, and, and know that they're licensed um, and know that they have experience in that particular area so that they can give you the guidance to tell you, yes, this is a circumstance where, you know, it's a really good, I would advise you to have access to an attorney um, for this, or you might, you know, have a situation like you mentioned, uh, Imam Mujahid, that they said, well, I'm so glad you came in because I can tell you what form to use because you wouldn't have had any idea what's the right form to use. Um, but this is something where you likely can fill it out yourself and just call me for, um, you know, just to kind of figure out a couple of things. But at the bottom of every form, 
You know, that's why we don't want to just go and grab forms by ourselves. At the bottom of every form, if they're being responsible, at the bottom of it, it'll say consult with an attorney. Uh, because even marking yes or no, that's a legal that's a legal conversation. The question is, what does yes mean for you and your family? What does marking no mean for you and your family? You know, those, those members of our community who deal with immigration documents, I think they see this a lot. Um, they are a lot of times trying to streamline with their budget and not co contacting an attorney. And then they're dealing with the aftermath where it would have been helpful if they were able to speak to an attorney first and say, this is what I'm working on. Is that something I can do by myself? Or is this something I really should have an attorney help me with? And the attorney is going to look at their particular circumstance and say, "Ooh, you got a lot of complications to yours. You have, uh, you know, maybe a marriage dissolution in the past. You have a couple of kids here. They have a couple of kids there. And you're pregnant. You know, there's so many different layers to each person. Sure, you know, there's some things that you can be generalized, but really, law it's not one size fits all. And that's where attorneys come in. Attorneys come in to help you understand how the law applies to you and to your family." And that kind of conversation is not had, you know, on Google, on Facebook. Um, you know, Google did not go to law school. I've heard that say before. Google does not have a oh, JD. Oh, no. <laughs> You're putting down Google here. I, I know. Google will be very unhappy about that. They, they, you know, they'll be just fine. I think it's great to Google just to kind of get a sense of maybe a subject matter. But um, please, you know, we wouldn't want to rely on that as legal advice because there are certain um, things about the law that we learned in law school, but, you know, nobody else would know this. But there are, um, there are, uh, what makes up law are varied. So there are statutes that the federal government um, put into place. And then there are oh, statutes. Hold on a minute. That, that, that requires quite a bit of explanation. Let me take a short break. This is Imam Malik Mujahid, and I'm talking with Zarina Nathir, who is a lawyer in Phoenix, Arizona, as well as a professor. You're watching Muslim Network TV. We'll be right back after these messages. Assalamu alaikum everyone, it's your brother Zain Bika from South Africa. One of the first educational programs ever produced for Muslim children was the ever popular Adam's World series. The colorful and comical Muslim puppets stole the heart of a generation. Sound Vision will be releasing brand new episodes of Adam's World with the launch of a Adam's World app. Subscribers will enjoy new Adam's World episodes as they are released as well as all the classic episodes of Adam's World. So visit adamsworldapp.com now to learn more, subscribe and enjoy new adventures of Adam and his friends. And let's keep helping tomorrow's Muslims today. Assalamu alaikum. Adam's World. Believe me there's a lot to see. Bismillah. Let's explore. Welcome back to Muslim Network TV. This is Imam Malik Mujahid. I'm talking with uh, Zarina Nadir, who is a professor as well as a lawyer and an activist who likes people to be smart about using a lawyer. So how do I go about uh, 
retaining a lawyer uh, because uh, lawyers write contracts and uh, do I hire another lawyer to look into my contract being offered by one particular lawyer because otherwise it has a whole lot of stuff in there. That's a very good point. Um, so there are multiple ways to access attorneys these days. Fortunately, we have a few different options. Um, there are, there's the traditional model where you connect with uh, an individual attorney or perhaps they're in a law firm and you sit down and have a consultation. Keep in mind, most consultations are typically, um, there's going to be a charge for them. Um, sometimes there aren't, but um, a lot of times there are. And, and then they're going to have a conversation with you about engagement and retaining them um, as far as perhaps a limited scope or uh, just to kind of see this whole issue through to fruition. And so that's kind of a traditional model. They will give you an engagement contract and that's going to spell out how, um, what the fees are, what you're responsible for as a, as an, a client. And keep in mind, clients have responsibilities too, um, not just the attorney. Uh, you know, for the attorney to be able to uh, represent you to the fullest, they are going to need that client to be forthright, to you know, be honest, um, to share, you know, um, to promptly respond as well that they can um, have have a proper um, you know representation of you and to give you the best representation um, know that your conversation no, the- who is going to look at my contract which is being offered by the attorney I want to retain because I, you know it looks like you go to physician's office and uh, there is something called second opinion but you go to physician office, most of the time you just go along, whatever, because he's the expert and they have very high approval rating. You're getting a lawyer and lawyer is giving you a contract. Uh, I just have to trust that it's a contract which is in my favor or do I need to have some knowledge base to be able to read into contract what is good for me, what is not good for me? Are all contract by lawyers are a standard or they're different? Great question. Um, they can vary, uh, and so, and I would, I would, as a rule, never assume that any contract is just standard. So, what I would suggest is to read it. Uh, and when I say standard, it might be standard for them, their standard practice, but it may be different from another uh, contract that you've seen. So, what I always suggest is read. Um, in the cases of a contract from an attorney, as far as engagement. Um, you likely are not going to hire another attorney to review the contract of the attorneys. But what you simply can do is review it, read it, make notes on what your questions are and talk to the attorney about that. Um, this might be a circumstance where if you have a friend who's an attorney, um, you know, ask them, uh, does this sound normal? Does this sound, uh, you know, kind of kind of a typical uh, arrangement? Um and again, you know, if they are practicing in that particular area, then they would have a better sense of it. But I would say read it, read it word for word. And what you don't understand, ask the attorney about it. Certainly the attorney is not um, able to give you advice on whether you should sign that engagement contract or not with them. Uh, that's just kind of a formality of it, but they should be happy to answer any questions that you have that you um, don't understand. I 100% agree that you read it. One, you know, reading a contract, um, in that contract with the attorney, but this really goes for any contract. Reviewing a contract is very key uh, because a lot of times we may think, well, they're in my best interest or it's going to be fine. Or, you know, we just kind of have these kinds of notions or I trust them. They look honest, right? These are some of the, the ways that we've typically kind of dealt with uh, contracts or, hey, I just really want it. So whatever, I'll deal with how to, you know, get out of it later. Um, reading the contract, it helps both parties. Uh, you know, I've been in circumstances where I, I wish somebody just read the contract because then we would have the expectations aligned. We would all understand what the expectations are. So it, it is key to always uh, read a contract. We were, we were also um, talking about, you know, different ways to access attorneys. That's not the only way um, to access an attorney. Like I said, that's the traditional model. I'm fortunate to work with an organization that gives you the ability to speak to an attorney on any legal matter without worrying about the high hourly costs. Um, for 90% of legal matters that you deal with. Um, and that operates from more of instead of putting down a big hefty retainer, but paying monthly. And then you have access to the law firm within your state or in your province. Um, we're in Canada as well. And you're able to call into that law firm and get guidance, get advice. You'll actually not have to worry about what's the kind of lawyer I need. You simply just call in and they'll hear your issue 
and connect you to the appropriate attorney in the appropriate department within the firm. And you can talk to them as long as you need. Zarina, that, you know, in a week in this age of internet, uh, you know, you go to this website, you're looking for that service, you're buying this particular thing. Everybody is sending you to accept and agree to a contract, which is like reading, uh, lengthy reading in the legalese and you have no idea. I mean, this is our daily life. Probably 90, 95% of the people, I, I can admit right here, that whenever I'm downloading anything or going to a website, they want me to agree to something. I just agree to it without reading it because it's just almost impossible. I try reading it sometime, but it is difficult even to understand what uh, uh, ramification of one or the other thing is. So how people in this time and age in which bigger companies want to protect themselves by you signing a contract. So we are not talking a lawyer here. We're talking teams of lawyers who have developed a contract for a company and almost all of us end up uh, agreeing to this or that on internet for different services or the website or the product which we're looking for. How do we deal with this phenomenon? Are there organizations who say, okay, if you get a contract from ABC company, uh, we have checked it out. These are okay by and large. Or watch out for this. Don't agree with these type of contract. I mean, there are issues of uh, privacy, selling of data. I mean, this is a whole world which the world is not aware of. And and this is an un, perhaps unpopular perspective that I'm going to share. Um, but I do hope, and I share it because I hope that this will become the norm. I believe that we all need to be lawyered up. This is the world that we live in. You laid it out perfectly, Imam Mujahid, that there are contracts that we're signing every day. We are clicking, we are agreeing, and these are contracts, and we are responsible for them, whether we choose to read them or not. You know, there's there's a, a something that we learn in law school, and uh, you know, it's ignorance is not a defense. It's it's not a defense to just say, oh, I I just didn't know. Well, that's why the contract was there. That's why they do need to be reviewed. And so, you know, I am an advocate for that. Um, I that's the work that I've dedicated myself to for the last eight years is to ensuring that our families, our business owners, our entrepreneurs, our students, our women, they have access to attorneys. They are, and, and not just one attorney, because as you mentioned, you know, there's privacy issues and there's family issues and then there's maybe traffic issues, then, then maybe there's a business issue. And so we really need to have um, more wraparound um, access to attorney, um, access to attorney services and, and the and the advice of attorneys, you know, where you can simply copy and paste that that terms of agreement and forward it to your attorney to see if that's something you want to do. There was a circumstance, I had a colleague who was writing a book. She was self-publishing. And, and, you know, a lot of us might think, yay, that's great. Again, these are, you know, fantastic circumstances. Like I, I shared earlier about, you know, getting married, but you're writing a book. There are so many legalities that deal with that. And fortunately, she was astute enough to, before she clicked the, you know, I'm not sure which company she used, but it was a very popular one, one that we probably all know. And she said, hold on one second. Let me go ahead and pull that contract before I just click and agree. And let me send that to my law firm so that the uh, intellectual property attorney, the contract attorney can take a look at that and advise me if I'm basically selling my book to them. If I'm turning over my words, turning over my entire thought process and they own it, or maybe I own still a piece of it, or now we're co-owners in it. There are so many different questions that really occur in all different areas. And so we really need to be in a state where we have regular ongoing access to attorneys, especially I mean, I, in this country. I understand that, that uh, major contract which you're entering like a book, like um, you're buying a house or- Even small contracts, even uh, the small contracts, but, I would say. It, but the daily practice, how in the world billion plus people who are using internet and internet keep throwing anything you download, anything which you use, they want you to agree to a contract with the guy. How do we go around reading all of that? How do we hire people? I mean, billions of people, uh, I mean, very few people can afford. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, right now in New York, 25% of New Yorkers are looking around for food. 
how they can have a lawyer while they're going to the website on internet and they're asking them to agree to a contract which they don't even understand. They can read English there, but they may not understand the legalese. Yes. So and I'm don't you think there need to be a, a sort of a independent services uh, in maybe not-for-profit arena that they read through it and make it develop a list out there that, okay, these contracts which you come your way, they are okay for you to go ahead with that. I mean, my practice at this moment is I need a software. And sometimes I have a software already have there, but they have updated their contract. And I use that software every day. I just say, I agree. Yeah, there's a simple system out there. Um, there is a system where you have the access to attorneys. So this is one of the other ways that you can access attorneys. Um, and it's been around for over 50 years where you can pay a low monthly fee and you now have access to their law firm. That means that the attorneys are being paid well so that they're there, they're ready to serve you and they're not focused on billing you. That's a way that I would 100% recommend people to go. I would not recommend having a list because the laws change all the time. And if we're in a circumstance where we're thinking, oh, okay, um, this was on the list last year, well, that could have changed. It could have changed drastically. Um, and that's why it is key. You know, we, we can't get away from having access to attorneys. Um, I think we need to work on how do we accept it and how do we do it in a way that it's going to be affordable to the masses, yet the attorneys are still going to be compensated. That's kind of like the healthcare world, right? Back in the day, we didn't have health insurance, what, 100 years ago, 50, 60 years ago. And people really, if they don't have that kind of system in place, then they're oftentimes waiting for their health issues to get so traumatic that now they're forced, they have no other option than to speak with the doctor. And unfortunately, that's the world that, you know, for the most part we are in today that, you know, we wait for our legal issues to become so traumatic that, you know, now it's just expensive, but there is another way. And this way I would suggest is looking at these organizations that have um, the, 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 you know, the monthly kind of membership option where we keep things low, similar again to like the health insurance model, keep uh, the cost low, um, and they're even a lot lower than insurance. Um, we're talking 25, 50 bucks a month um, for an entire family. And they have access to a top law firm in their state for these kinds of things because you can't get around it. I've seen colleagues, I've seen friends who try to do it themselves. And, um, you know, they're looking at, they're Googling and they find a law that's in Canada, but they live in, you know, Texas. That's, th this is, that, that's where attorneys come in. You know, that's exactly where we're coming. You don't want to cut corners on accountants. You don't want to cut corners on attorneys. And that's even for families. You know, a lot of us may think, okay, well, I'm not a big business, so I shouldn't have to, um, you know, my issues aren't as important. We have the same laws that are applying to us. They just may be on a smaller scale. And a $30,000 snafu to us, sure, it's not a big deal to a big organization, a big company, but it's going to be a big deal to us. Even a $200 snafu on, on us, <laughs> right, the rest of us, that's a big issue. So, um, our, you know, we we matter just as much as the super wealthy do. And so I really encourage individuals to, you know, explore some of these other options. There are pro bono options out there. Um, but the truth of the matter is pro bono programs are just not well funded as they should be in order to people to get to the help that they really need. Um, if we're always waiting for... Um, you know, a program to be funded well, um, then your family is going to suffer. So I say pay a little bit on the front end, you know, just kind of like the health insurance model. Um, that's the work that I get to do and that I have done for the last eight months. People pay a little bit on the front end and then they have this kind of access. And then having early intervention is going to help you in the long run. You know, there's a statistic out there that says that you're almost three times more likely to end up in court than you are to even end up in the hospital. That's the world that we live in. And so we really need to wake up. You know, we need to wake up um, and see how do we become more legally savvy for ourselves and for our family. And if we're not just concerned about ourselves, we need to be concerned about our kids because the decisions that we as parents make, I'm not a parent, but you know, but I'm an auntie, right? The decisions that we make trickle down to our kids and their kids and then to our communities. You know, as I mentioned, I was inspired to go to law school because of 9-11. And what I saw was that there were parents who were opening the doors to the FBI. Okay, they were letting okay, them okay, okay. you're getting to FBI <laughs> and police. Let me call them first as we take a short break. We'll talk about it. Okay. You're watching Muslim Network TV. This is Imam Malik Mujahid, and I'm talking with Professor Zarina Nader about the best practices a human being should have 
in the country which is built on laws. We'll be right back after these messages. We are justice for all. Headquartered in the heart of downtown Chicago, Justice for All is a global humanitarian initiative dedicated to raising awareness for human rights concerns impacting vulnerable minority groups. We promote policies that protect religious freedom, address the root causes of mass displacement, and recognize the plight of refugees and forced migrants. Our diverse team of staff and volunteers, led by Imam Malik Mujahid, work tirelessly to help Justice for All achieve their goals. Past campaigns covered a wide range of humanitarian concerns. Through Bosnia Task Force, Imams and leaders of Chicago's Muslim community worked to ensure Bosnia became a top national issue. This led to life-saving American policies in Bosnia. A key accomplishment was helping to get rape declared a war crime. Initiatives also included Kosovo Task Force, Central African Republic Task Force, and Flint Coalition, which brought awareness to the water crisis affecting the people of Flint, Michigan. Highlights of our work include supporting Black Lives Matter, Parliament of the World's Religions, addressing climate change, so wasteful consumption starts the ruthless production, and that's where we need all the fossil fuel in the world. And prominent media exposure. This is Imam Malik Mujahid, uh, president of Justice for All. And I'm the director of outreach for Justice for All. And that's why we need to go back to what worked. Today we're demanding an apology uh, from the CEO of Costco. The Chinese crackdown on Uyghurs and other Turkic people has only gotten worse. Current programs such as Burma Task Force advocate for the rights of Rohingya refugees in Bangladesh, internally displaced populations, and all those denied freedom of movement and at risk of starvation. Through this, we mobilized thousands of calls to elected representatives. This paved the way for the U.S. to increase funding for Rohingya refugees from $30 million to over $600 million. Two of our documentaries were featured on international news outlets. The Rohingya People, a slow-burning genocide on BBC World News, and Rohingya Refugees Tell of Massacre was featured on CNN. We've organized rallies, UN mission visits, expanded presentations on campuses, promoted research and report writing, outreach to think tanks, media, and other influencers. Faith Coalition educates about the Rohingya genocide and crimes against humanity faced by ethnic groups in Burma. We've traveled to refugee camps, convened a meeting of Karen, Kachin, and Rohingya leaders, both to encourage cooperation and to guide them in congressional outreach. We organized Rohingya Advocacy Day. This led to over 100 participants visiting the offices of 60 U.S. Senators and congressional representatives. Free Kashmir advocates for the people of Kashmir. Long-term goals include the call for self-determination, the end of the Indian military's occupation of the territory, and raising awareness of Kashmiri issues among the American people. After the August 5th reinvasion of Kashmir, we organized national protests in front of various Indian government buildings, partnered with Stand with Kashmir, and launched a petition condemning the Gates Foundation's decision to present Prime Minister Modi a humanitarian award. Save Uyghur informs Muslims and neighbors of other faiths about the ongoing cultural genocide of Uyghur Muslims and mobilizes public support. Our projects include boycotting Chinese products with our Fast From China campaign, pushing Bill S-178 in the Senate, and organizing a nationwide protest of Costco.
Together, we can continue to stand up for justice. Justice for all. Welcome back to Muslim Network TV. You're watching us on Muslim uh, Network TV, dot TV as well as Galaxy 19 Satellite, Amazon Fire TV, and Raku. And uh, this is Imam Malik Mujahid. I'm talking with Zarina Nader, who is a professor of law as well as a practicing attorney in Arizona. What are the major mistakes most people make when it comes to lawyer, dealing with lawyers? So one of the major mistakes is talking to, uh, one, getting, getting to attorneys way too late. Um, if we, the issues that a lot of times we deal with, um, and I know we're checking our wallets before we're checking our rights, um, but what ends up happening is that the longer we wait to deal with a legal issue, the fewer options we have to address it. Very similar to healthcare. If we found out that, you know, we had cancer before it turned stage four, then maybe we could have been saved, right? Same kind of situation with legal matters. It's the exact same thing. So getting to an attorney way too late. Secondly, um, connecting with the wrong attorney. Uh, you know, a lot of times because we haven't had a lot of experience with accessing attorneys, uh, many of us just kind of do what people have said to do. Um, and they, you know, maybe, you know, corner a friend who they know went to law school and they, you know, ask them to, to represent them. And that friend may even say, listen, that's not even my area of the law. And then that friend is still saying, I know I've been put in this circumstance. Please just help me. I know you. I like you. You know, <laughs> just help me. And I'm saying, you know, your issue is really outside of my wheelhouse. And so not understanding that we have different kinds of attorneys um, to handle different kinds of things. And then obviously dealing with uh, an experienced, licensed um, attorney as well. One of the other mistakes that we we do when dealing with attorneys is uh, we don't tell them everything. We we don't um, utilize them as counselors. Um, a lot of times we go in and, and we think we want to tell them what to do. Uh, but the attorney, the, the role of the attorney is to advise you to understand what the law is and to advise you on what your best interest is for dealing with um, your particular situation. And so it's important to understand that while you of course are the driver, um, you know, the attorney's not gonna do anything that you don't want them to do, but you do need to um, rely on and listen to them and their experience, their expertise. When we, um, you know, when I'm in circumstances with someone and I'm telling them, you know, and never, trust <laughs> if an attorney, no attorney, no good attorney is ever going to tell you this is exactly how it's going to happen uh, because there's so many factors that we just don't control. Uh, but, a, a, but a good attorney who has experience is going to be able to tell you, well, here is what you could possibly expect. Uh, and so that's the kind of conversation that um, you definitely want to have with an attorney. But the biggest thing is we get to attorneys way too late. Um, attorneys would love to keep you rather keep you out of trouble than get you out of trouble. It's a lot better for you um, in the long run, it's going to be a lot less stressful. It's going to be a lot less expensive. There was a circumstance where, um, you know, this was something that um, the, we had a, a client and she had a big debt. She was called on by a company for a really big debt. And she ended up saying, well, let me just go ahead and put a little bit down on that. And then I'm going to call the attorney and ask them about it. Well, the attorney said, how old was that debt? And they came to found out, find out that there were statute of limitations. There's always a statute of limitations. Um, and she was beyond that. So the, that company actually didn't have any right uh, to bill her still and to still have that debt on her. But since she put a little bit down on it, it re-triggered it and opened it back up again. And now she was responsible for that entire hmm. six-figure debt. So this is why it's so important to have a conversation early on uh, and to, you know, really not assume that, oh, I, I think I'll just figure it out or I'll just, you know, we don't, we don't know this kind of information. We weren't raised with this information. And even as an attorney, I don't know everything. But what I do know is oftentimes there is a legal implication and that's what I want to find out. So I'm not any special or extra just because I, you know, because I'm a lawyer or, you know, this didn't come from my home training. This came from my legal training, from being educated. 
those of us who are doctors in our community, they know certain information that others don't know simply because they've gone through the training, gone through the education. We as a community need to understand that the law is no different. It's very difficult to understand. Even, you know, sometimes we say, well, somebody's new to this country, they're going to have a hard time. Hey, people who've been here their whole lives don't understand the laws here. <laughs> and laws are state specific. They're city specific. Right. A traffic ticket in Scottsdale, Arizona, is different from getting a traffic ticket in Tucson, Arizona. And that's all in the same state. And so these are some of the things that we need to kind of change our mindset and really start to understand, not to know the law. This is not a a suggestion that everybody needs to go now and quit what they're doing and go study every single law out there. That's impossible. But to understand that there are certain implications, there are usually legal implications to everything we do. We had a circumstance where even in the nonprofit world, some of us are like, I'm just doing good. I'm just a do-gooder. I just want to, you know, take the kids to go swimming, <laughs> right? Or I just want to open up a little uh, a house for people who don't have a home and I want them to be able to, you know, come there. Well, we had a circumstance where there was a um, uh, someone who opened up a house for people who didn't have a home and one of the tenants sued the person who was just opening up the home. Um, and, uh, you know, so... There are so many different things that we need to protect ourselves. I know my brother was working on a program and they were talking about um, a youth program where they wanted to take the kids to swim. And my brother, I'm so proud of him. He said, well, before we do that, let's connect with an attorney just to see what kind of liabilities are going to be there. How do we protect the kids? How do we protect ourselves? Um, and in a world where um, you know we have more knowledge and we have more information, that's to me a better world. This world now is there's such a disparity in who has information and who doesn't that those who are maybe prone to overstep, they're overstepping because those who are prone to just always step back are just taking it. We're targets out here when we don't have um, so a you, level you, of information. you like to see more informed consumer also, not just uh, lawyers, but you want people who are... Uh, uh, who need to retain lawyers or general population to be more informed about uh, laws and uh, uh, its challenges and how to do, deal with that. Absolutely. Um, and, and again, not to go and, you know, now everybody enrolled in law school and I mean, even law school, that's not going to teach you everything. Um, but what it does teach you is um, how to start being aware, how to become aware that the, you know, the life has legal implications. And and it's a good thing. We don't want a world where, you know, and we're Muslim too, right? We have rules. There are rules. And so that when we follow these rules, hopefully everyone can live well and easy and and have a good life. And so that's the same when it comes to, um, you know, living within this country. Um, You know, that's going to be key. So I'm not advocating everyone to go out and, you know, now become a lawyer. What I'm advocating is to heighten your legal literacy in the sense of understanding and to just pause. How do I, if I'm signing this, do I know even how to get out of it? Do I know what the implications are? How do you know, pause, I'm getting married. What, what kind of responsibilities do I now have? Um, You know, I'm getting ready to have a, 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 put my child in this program. What kind of um, liabilities might be there? What am I turning over? Did I just sign a waiver to say that if this teacher is negligent (laughs) and not paying attention to my child and something happens to my child that I just completely close the door and the option on being able to, um, you know, uh, get health care for my child or have it paid for by the school. Like these are the kinds of things that we as a community really need to um, to think about, because this is the thing. There is a segment of our society that has this kind of information. Knowledge and applied knowledge is power. When that segment of our society can have this kind of information, the benefits trickle up to their kids and to their communities. When our community, you know, um, stays, when I'll say uninformed, the consequences are trickling down to our communities. You know, we're being targeted in certain ways because they know we don't have information and they know we're not savvy to get it. We need to heighten that. And so, um, you know, I really okay, encourage but, us. But, but tell me, you know, I haven't done anything wrong. Mm. I'm, I'm very transparent. I'm law-abiding citizen. And uh, when I need help, uh, if FBI is knocking there, and if there is honest information, I can provide them. What is wrong with that? So great question. And perhaps you're talking about maybe dealing with law enforcement or things like that. 
Um, you know, this is one of the big myths that we have, um, that lawyers are just for bad things and lawyers are just for bad people. Uh, you know, I want to reiterate, and if we get nothing from this conversation, uh, lawyers are counselors. We help you to make better decisions. It has nothing to do with being in trouble. You know, as Muslims, we know that there are plenty of righteous people who were doing nothing wrong. And we know this from our, our religious tradition, right? In addition to uh, the just reflecting on history, that there are plenty of people who haven't done anything wrong uh, and they still, um, you know, bad things can happen to them. So this isn't about being scared. This is just about being prepared, um, you know? And also in our tradition, we have a tradition of trusting God and tie our camel, right? We're not just leaving our door unlocked and saying God is gonna take care of it. So, so too in our life here, we need to not only um, trust in God, but we also need, and we need to understand the system that we work in. So when we're dealing with law enforcement and things like this, again, this is just, everybody needs to understand this. Your lawyer has the obligation and the responsibility to represent your best interest under the law, right? They're not going to, uh, you know, change the law or anything like that, but they're going to understand the law and how it's going to apply to your best interest. When you're dealing with law enforcement, that is not their job. That is not their role. Sure, one of their jobs is to help protect society, right? And help protect the peace of society as a stated kind of rule, right? However, their job is not to inform you of your rights. One of the main rights that they can that they have to inform you of is what we call the Miranda rights. We've a lot of times heard of that. You have the right to remain silent, you have the right to an attorney. But that is said at a very specific time. That is said when you are being arrested and they intend to uh, arrest and detain you. And so that's the point where they say it. But realize, if you haven't heard that, do you know if you're being, uh, you don't know, oh, I should be silent right now? No, you're just talking and saying, I have nothing to hide. Well, there are circumstances, and this is one of the reasons that sparked me to go into law, there are circumstances where people were, um, they were getting ready to just have conversations with the FBI. They were bringing them in to, um, they were bringing them into the um, home, into their house, and they were just having these conversations. Well, what you don't realize is their job is they're observing everything. They are watching everything. They are looking at you. And on that particular visit, sure, they're just hearing what you have to say. But a little later, now they know they can come in. So they're going to come in and they're going to ask you some other questions. And they're going to now see if they're measuring up. And you maybe didn't realize, okay, maybe I did go to Juma with Ali. You know, but now they said, you said you didn't go to Juma with Ali. Well, I thought you were talking about the other Ali. I don't know who you're talking about. I was just trying to help. Uh, and now you are caught up in lying to the federal government. These are some of the tactics that, these are tactics that law enforcement are welcome to use. They, are, they have the ability to do this. So I'm not saying don't be cooperative. All I'm saying is I'm definitely saying be cooperative, but be cooperative with a, with, with a proper understanding. Say, um, I'd be happy to cooperate if my attorney thinks that um, that would be a good thing. And then I'll be happy to connect with you. Or if my attorney is present, don't let him in your house. Uh, don't just start talking because um, as a, and I've been a public defender. So as an attorney, you know, on the defense side, I understand that there are times where my client spoke <laughs> when if they didn't, and, and maybe it was, maybe they think, and I'm just being honest, but they just put some kind of admission out there that is now twisted. Um, and it's hard to come back from that. So it's very key to not, to, 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 to assert your right to be silent, to assert your right to an attorney, um, and to understand the role of the attorney for you, the role of the attorney for you, again, to look out for your best interest. That is not the same role for the police. That's not their role. Their role is society at large, not your particular best interest. And this is not a recommendation to, to, to you know, obstruct justice or absolutely not at all. We have to, we have to abide by the laws. We have to abide by the laws, but we need to understand the way to do it. And these are, um, and, and you know, so always, always people, the uh, Professor, now there are a whole lot of people who are getting in difficulty. Um, you know, police stops them here and there. And uh, I mean, the whole situation in our country. 
in which a uh, uh, lot of people uh, are injured or murdered mm -hmm. and uh, dealing with law enforcement and there are no law lawyers involved there is no opportunity to have a lawyer in many of these situation if you are stopped and uh, you're not answering them right and things like that so 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 of course they cannot call lawyer i say well wait a minute let me connect with my lawyer on the on the telephone that's not going to happen so it is possible oh, it there, is that possible. is possible we we work the organization i work with that is one of the big things that we do back in the 90s there was um you know this police brutality has been going on for um since the the time this country has been founded um, not necessarily police, but the predecessor to police. Um, and so this kind of thing has been happening. And in the 90s, there was a circumstance where a, a Haitian immigrant was brutalized by the New York Police Department. And um, and our um, uh, the founder of our organization learned about this and implemented 24-7 emergency access to an attorney by phone. It's nationwide. Um, so that is something that is possible. And I definitely recommend that people speak to an attorney, uh, request to speak to an attorney, of course, survive the stop. That's the most important thing. Um, but make that assertion. Um, there have been circumstances where that has saved lives. Um, I've seen a circumstance where there was a young woman, a Latina woman, who was driving home. She was driving late at night. Turns out she was undocumented, but she was in the process of becoming documented. She was married to a citizen and they were working on it, right? But it, as a lot of us know, that's a long process. Um, the immigration process is a long process. So she ended up being pulled over by the police late at night and um, she was completely honest. And they said, you know, license registration. She said, I don't have it, I'm undocumented. And, uh, and, and she was sensing, you know, the tone of the officer. And she said, well, can I speak to my attorney, um, to my husband? And he said, uh, no, you can't. This is because we don't have a right to speak to our, our spouse. We don't have the right to speak to our pastor, our imam, our mom, right, at that time. She then said, can I speak with my attorney? And she already had the phone number for the attorney, for our for our 24 access um, uh, attorney who has their phone on them. And they couldn't say no. This is this was a game changer. She said the the tone, the way that the officer treated me completely changed. It was like he was looking at me like I was some famous person. And she was able to call her attorney at that time. And she was able to go home that night. And she called me the next morning and said, Zarina, I was able to go home to my kids thanks to you, thanks to this program. So this is a game changer. This isn't the only one. I have another friend, her sons, two young African-American boys in it, living in an affluent area. Their mom makes very good money. They live in a very affluent area. And they were on a 4th of July several years ago playing around with fireworks like everyone is doing, right? And somebody called the police. Well, the police were called out and it was her two African-American twin boys and the other kids in the neighborhood, not of color. And when the police showed up, they had guns drawn on these 17 year old kids. Her kids though were able to say, may I call my attorney? They were the only kids who were able to do that because their mom had them already equipped with this. With this. Um, and so they were able to call her kids were the only kids who got to go home that night. The other kids had to go in and be arrested. Why hmm. does this matter? Because there are collateral consequences to dealing with legal matters. Her kids could have had a record at 17 years old. These kids were, they graduated valedictorian in their school and they were just playing around. These were just kids. Again, not bad, right? But, so, but, but somebody made a phone call on them. Yeah, yeah. So right. this is key, right? It's key well, that they were you, able to, the you. mom was able to protect them from having a record, even thank if they you. weren't convicted. When you, I served as director of admissions at um, Arizona State University. So our applications say on them, have you ever been arrested? These kids would have had to say that, make an explanation, right? That goes with you your entire life. So well, this they, is why our, our own job application has that question also. Exactly. Well, exactly. Thank you so much, Zarina Nader. You have been very helpful and uh, thoughtful contributions. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, this is Imam Malik Mujahid. You're watching Muslim Network TV on Galaxy 19 Satellite, Amazon Fire TV, and Raku, as well as social media. And you can all, we are always there. I mean, this is where Muslims connect with their neighbors and tell over your neighbors where you are. Pretty soon we'll be on Apple TV as well. And this is Imam Malik Mujahid. 
uh, thanking you for watching us and uh, thanking our producers, Sumaya Heather, uh, Zahra Nadim, as well as Connor Mays. Peace. Salam.